Hello everybody and welcome to Fighter Subscriber, where I challenge my subscribers to pit their craft against a selection of my own, which you can see here. We've already had our preliminary round to uh, help us whittle the 31 original craft down to the 12 that will be running this gauntlet, so let's go and meet today's contender. This is the box cutter by Omega, or Omega for my friends on the other side of the Atlantic, and uh, this is a good looking craft. I, I do like the aesthetic that's going on here. This is, unsurprisingly, given its name, a boxwing aircraft. It is armed with three Vulcan cannons, four Amrams, and six Sidewinders. I do like the uh, do like the way four of those Sidewinders just fit inside the box of the wing there. Um, when this was originally sent to me, it was powered by four Saturn engines, but uh, yeah, that was kind of excessive. So uh, two of those have since been replaced with Panthers, but it it still has a hell of a kick behind it. I took this craft up for a test flight, and yes, it performs quite well. It's quick, it's manoeuvrable, um, it is quite a heavy craft, it is carrying a lot of fuel, and this season I am being a lot stricter about just leaving the craft as they're sent to me, so uh, in future seasons you might want to keep an eye on that if you are going to send something in, uh, but it'll be interesting to see how that impacts this craft's performance. Let's dive straight in then. In this first fight, the box cutter will be going up against my uh, my more unconventional craft, the club tail. Let's get this one started. The box cutter's first fight starts as they turn around hard. Oh, that was a near miss. Uh, as they turn around hard, hard to get missiles away. One launched. How many are they set up to launch per target? Two. I think Jebediah only got one away there. There goes the second one. Yeah, as I said, it will be very interesting to see how the uh, the fuel loading affects these craft. What exactly is it? Um, 1600. I assume they had full tanks when they took off, so yeah. 1600 fuel. 1600 is more fuel than you need, in case anybody was wondering. Um... Conventional wisdom seems to uh, seems to vary. Uh, some people say 400 per engine for this kind of fight. Uh, our our own resident tuning expert, uh, Legged Lack, uh, seems to think 200 per engine at the most. Javadar Kerman still firing off missiles. The two sets of craft still quite far away. Javadar dodging those missiles, but only just oh, not quite enough. And another one of the box cutters seems to suffer a similar fate at exactly the same time. It's down to just the one. Daft B. Kerman turns around. She's not giving up. A couple of Amrams launched. Tries to follow them in. Those other craft are still a great distance away, though. I don't know what it is, but those two sets of craft really did not close the distance. It, it was genuinely just missile tennis at a great range. Now going in with the Amram. Sorry, going in with the Sidewinders. It's a good distance for the Sidewinders. Maybe should be a little closer to get the most out of them. But that seemed to do the job. We're down to two on one, but this does not look good. And I'm afraid Daffy Kerman will not be the first pilot to pull one of these competitions back from 3-1 down. Let's move on. Not the most ideal start then by the box cutters, but they did get a kill and every level helps in this competition. And now we move on to the second round where they'll be facing off against my Panthers. Let's get them into the air. And the competition starts. The Panthers starting to become something of whipping boys. Uh, they certainly can't turn as fast as the club tails. I'm not sure whether they will be able to get off their missiles before they have to start uh, breaking off to dodge, and it looks like they haven't this time around. Jebediah and co. closing the distance. I'm hoping they'll be able to close it a little bit better than they did in the previous fight. That was just weird, just both sets of craft so far apart from each other. Missiles are incoming now though. Jebediah does have to start breaking low, as do his wingmen. Missiles coming in doesn't seem to be causing them too many problems for the time being. All craft still in the air. It pauses for a second there. I was wondering what that was. Was that debris? Doesn't seem to have been. Jebediah gets away another pair of missiles. And 
once again everybody breaks low to dodge. Jebediah Kerman popping the chaff. The box cutters now onto their um, onto their sidewinders. This might prove to be a uh, an advantage because these can be very good. Jebediah needs to get a little bit closer until they're at their perfect range, but uh, you never know what what might happen here. That looks like a sidewinder going. You know, it's a Amram going in there. It looks like that Panther has managed to dodge that, though. How are the other box cutters getting on? Daffy Kerman comes about. Gets away a sidewinder. More of them raining in to that Panther over there. Can I find it? Not you. Not you. I think it's you. Breaking low. Popping flares. That seems to be enough. The Panthers are equipped with, um, with well, Panther engines, fittingly enough, and those don't have quite the uh, quite so big a heat signature as the as the Saturns do. I think if the if the Panthers start firing their uh, their sidewinders back at the box cutters, it might be problematic. That looks like debris. That is box cutter debris. One of the box cutters is out of here, decapitated, and will now just lawn dart into the ground. That is one of the Panthers gone though. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, one of the other, bo the other box cutters gone as <sighs> I am not staying with the right fights here. The one remaining box cutter, Jebediah Kerman, takes a couple of sidewinders. Yeah, I think it's exactly what I was talking about. The uh, the Panthers started to, de to deploy the Sidewinders and that was pretty much it. Again, an identical result. Two craft down. Uh, sorry. All craft down. Did manage to get a kill, but um, again, ultimately a loss for the box cutters. Let's, uh, let's see what fun and games their final fight will bring. So with just two kills to their names, the uh, the box cutters can now only accrue a maximum of eight points, which means sadly they won't be making it through to this season's final. Although they can still salvage some pride, and uh, I wish them the best of luck in this fight against my Red Hawks. Let's uh, let's get this one going. We'll uh, we'll follow the box cutters up for this one. Actually, um, last week I did something similar, and I joked that it was just to extend the running time because the fights were pretty short uh, and that has been I meant as I mentioned last episode it has been a major change I mean season two I was in some cases struggling to get the episodes under 20 minutes and now it's struggling to get them over 10 no we should be all right with this uh, something else I wanted to point out was I think it's quite brave to locate the sidewinders here in the wing box I haven't done much playing about much experimenting with sidewinder placement this version of KSP and BD Armory because it could be quite buggy at times. You set them up wrong and you could find yourself in, uh, with a little bit of a self-inflicted in injury uh, in the form of a, a disintegrating plane. How are we doing? Seven and a half kilometers. The fight starts and the box cutters turn around for one final time to launch their volley of missiles. Jebediah gets one away. Starts breaking low. Does manage to get that second missile away though. Yeah, so, yeah, but that, uh, that missile placement doesn't seem to have done the uh, the box cutters much harm. Uh, I have done some playing about with this uh, beyond just the um, beyond just the uh, test flight you saw earlier, and, yeah, they can launch all their missiles fine. Missiles flying back and forth. Jebediah Kerman seems to be safe. Can the same be said for his wingmen? It looks like one of them's good. Where's the other one? Yep. Firing missiles back towards the Red Hawks again. All of these craft, well, the, the two craft, two were uh, two groups of craft, keeping fairly close together and separated. Still about seven kilometres away, eight kilometres in the case of one of them here. Oh, that's one of the Red Hawks gone. I was not expecting that. The uh, the box cutters now having switched to uh, sidewinders. You don't really expect them to be that effective at this range, but clearly. They still are. The Red Hawks still piling in with the uh, with the Amrams. 
not quite as effective at uh, this version of BD Armoury. It'll be interesting to see how that goes, because you'd expect them, if they genuinely are that effective, the Sidewinders, compared to the Amrams, you'd expect them to, uh, to do a bit of nerfing of the Sidewinders. Or, or some buffing of the Amrams. Take your pick. Valentina Kerman pulling some hard manoeuvres there. That looks like one of the box cutters has gone. It could be two apiece. Valentina now with the Sidewinders. Another one of the box cutters is hit. It looks like no major damage. Valentina just about managed to survive that. One of the other box cutters. Yeah, decapitated once again. This box cutter in good health. Jebediah, however, out for the count. Might distract. The two remaining Red Hawks will have to see the uh, that bit of debris just uh, crashing to the ocean there. But Rich Mulkerman now with some work to do gets away a Sidewinder, which does did that hit one of the Red Hawks? No, uh, no fatal damage can keep gliding. I don't think I can count that as a kill for the uh, for the box cutters, as it came after the uh, the last box cutter was um, was destroyed. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's move on and take a look at the final scores. A bit of a torrid day for the box cutter then, although I do quite like this craft. There's a, there's a lot of interesting design choices, and I think that with an iteration or two, this could be a very good craft. Although, uh, I think possibly the fuel load could be the first thing to uh, suffer an adjustment. All we can do for the time being, though, is to deal with the craft that's in front of us. So if we bring up the leaderboard, we can see that with a, uh, a total of three kills and no survivors over the three fights, uh, puts the box cutter onto a total of three points outside the top four. And as I mentioned earlier, sadly, this will be the last we see of this craft this season. A huge thank you to Omega, or Omega, uh, for this craft. Uh, if you want to send me any of your stuff, uh, submissions for Season 3 are now closed, unfortunately. We've uh, we've gone through the preliminary round and everything. Um, but I am doing regular mailbag streams, so feel free to send me anything you like, and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it on there. I'll put the address in the description. If you have enjoyed today's video and you haven't already, please consider uh, liking, subscribing, following me on Twitter, getting involved with the Discord, that kind of stuff. Uh, all the details down below. I will be back soon with some more Fighter Subscriber, but for now, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.